For decades, our history attracted millions of visitors to our region. We're ready to welcome millions more. It's time we represent ourselves with a name that re Good evening. Welcome to the St. Charles Parish Council meeting on Monday, January 24, 2022 at 6 p.m. in the council chambers in the parish courthouse. Please silence all electronic devices and remove all hats. This meeting is called to order with a, ple a prayer and a ple the Pledge of Allegiance from Deacon Billy Raymond Sr. with the Mount Airy Baptist Church in Butte due to Reverend Chaplain Arlene Guidry being unable to attend. Mr. Raymond. Good evening. Most gracious Father, we thank you for the praise that you give us this evening. You've blessed us with another day and another opportunity just to let you know how much we love you, how much we appreciate you, how much we appreciate life and our striving to, to have the mission in proclaiming repentance to you through Jesus Christ. Your unconditional love for us has protected us through the night, woke us up this morning, and has protected us throughout this day. As we prepare for this council meeting, we pray that your Holy Spirit will dwell among us. We realize that we are in an ever-changing world, and we ask that you will help us to navigate through the challenges by providing us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to understand what you desire of us and allow those desires to be the desires of our hearts. We pray for the administration and council and all assembled here today. We place all in your hands today anoint us with the creativity, ideas, and energy so that each decision will bring honor to you. Should there be times of disagreement, we pray for common ground which will lead to meaningful solutions. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Billy. Appreciate it. Uh, approval of minutes. A motion and a second is needed to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of January 10th, 2022. I have a motion by Ms. Gordon, a second by Ms. Billings. Please cast your votes. And that motion passes with <coughs> six yeas and three being absent. Councilman Dufresne, Councilwoman Fisher Perrier, and Councilman Gibbs. Special proclamations, canvas returns, etc. 2022 0013 proclamation. Wear red day for women in St. Charles Parish. Mr. Jewell. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Proclamation: Diseases of the whereas diseases of the heart are the nation's leading causes cause of death, and stroke is the third leading cause of death. And whereas more women die of heart disease, stroke, and all other cardiovascular diseases than the next five leading causes of death combined, including all cancers. And whereas February is designated as American Heart Month, and whereas Go Red for Women is the American Heart Association's national call to increase awareness about heart disease, the leading cause of death for women, and to inspire women to take charge in their heart health. And whereas since the first National Wear Red Day, tremendous strides have been made in the fight against heart disease in women. And whereas fewer women are dying from heart disease and more women are aware that, their number one, that it is their number one health threat. And whereas all women should learn their own personal risk for heart disease using tools that the, quote, Go Red for Women social initiative provides by taking their health care, talking to their health care provi provider. And whereas making the right choices relating to proper nutrition, physical activity, doctor vi doctor's visits, and other lifestyle methods is essential to living a heart-healthy life. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the St. Charles Parish Council, 
and the parish president to hereby declare February 4th, 2022 as Wear Red Day for Women in St. Charles Parish in recognition of the importance of all of the ongoing fight against heart disease and stroke and urge all citizens to show their support for women to fight against heart disease by commemorating this day by wearing the color red. By increasing awareness and empowering women to reduce their risk for cardiovascular disease, we can save thousands of lives each year. Um, over to receive uh, this, we have Dr. William Robinson, a cardiologist here at St. Charles Parish Hospital, uh, Miss Alexis Black, who is a nurse practitioner, and is uh, Keith with us today? No. Okay. Come on. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Will Robinson. I'm an interventional cardiologist at St. Charles Hospital. Um, we just wanted to let you guys know that this was a great honor and privilege for us to have this proclamation. Um, and we will, um, actually on the 4th, we have a special lunch um, called Go Red for uh, women um, discussing heart health and everything. And we will be um, grateful if everyone, um, if you're available to join. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Reports, Finance, Administrative Activities, 2022-0011, Paris President's Remarks Report. Mr. Jewell. Thank you, Chairman. We'll let the um, presentation get up on the screen real quick. Okay. We'll start with COVID numbers. Today, LDH reported a total of 12,494 positive cases of COVID-19 in St. Charles Parish since the beginning of the pandemic. This is 1,346 more cases than the last time that I gave a, um, uh, an update to this council. Numbers do, see, do seem to be decreasing as we are now seeing a daily average of about 96, compa 96 cases as compared to uh, the daily average, which was 135 two weeks ago. Uh, additionally, our, um, our positivity rate has gone down as well. Um, testing locations, you might have received um, uh, a text message or an email today if you were signed up for our alerts uh, that there's going to be some testing at Access Health in Norco, 16004 River Road, Tuesday and Thursday, uh, and that is going to be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., as well as the St. Charles Parish Hospital is still uh, performing testing as well. Um, and that is our, our hospital on Paul Mallard, and that's Mondays, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., Tuesday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, those do have a limited number per day, and that's why you see a reduced number of times there. But uh, we do have this information available on our website, on our uh, channel, as well as um, uh, our social media pages. We'll just go into uh, the Hurricane Ida update. Courthouse, third floor, um, the renovations are, I guess, repairs uh, to restrooms and offices are complete. So our employees will be moving back into those spaces. Um, if you were up on the third floor today, you saw some work going on out in our lobby uh, to repair the damage there. Um, community centers, uh, the Kelowna and St. Rose community centers are fully repaired and they are completely opening, open and they are again offering their full slate of activities for residents. Uh, over in Waterworks, the engineering is underway uh, to make the necessary repairs uh, to the building. There was uh, severe damage uh, to both East and West Bank Waterworks uh, buildings. Um, we have various fencing throughout the parish that it has been damaged, um, and we are at about a 75% completion, completion rate um, for privacy fencing uh, around pump stations, lift stations uh, throughout the parish. <coughs> the DRC, which is our Disaster Recovery Center from FEMA, uh, closed last week on Friday, January 21st. Uh, residents who still need assistance from FEMA uh, can reach out uh, or visit other DRC locations. 
or they can call the helpline. That helpline number is 1-800-621-3362. You can also find other DRC locations at uh, www.fema.gov slash DRC, uh, but they've moved to more of a regional uh, DRC approach at this time. Uh, Over to Public Works. Um, Patchwork is beginning um, for a number of streets. This is the final round of roads that was rolled over from last year. Uh, this work this work was delayed due to Hurricane Ida. Uh, we'll be working to identify streets for 2022, 2022 soon, and we'll be reaching out to the council as well in that regard. Uh, so you see the streets on your screen here. There was one minor mistake. That's Tinney Street, which is actually in Booty and not Luling. Um, but that is also on our list. Um, over to Parks. Um, our parks, I'll, I'll just say, have frankly been kind of one of the hardest areas where we've been trying to get um, g- get them back open. Uh, all of those repairs are going to be going through FEMA, uh, and the FEMA process is pretty exhaustive as far as the amount of the amount and level of detail required uh, to meet FEMA's uh, standards. Uh, so that has been uh, taking place for a long time now. But I'm happy to say that uh, the Parks and Recreation uh, has been able to safely open additional parks, uh, Booty Park, uh, and we're glad to say that those fields are lighted. Rathborn Park, uh, that field is lighted as well. Munts Park, not lighted. Um, <clears throat> there's some, uh, the remote control track at the, the playground and the remote control track at the East Bank Bridge Park has been reopened. The playground and tennis courts at both the, uh, at, at the, in the walking path at the West Bank Bridge Park uh, is open. The ball fields at both the East Bank and West Bank Bridge Park remain closed for safety reasons at this time. We're working very hard to make sure that by the time our baseball season comes around, that we are able to um, that we are able to hold our, our baseball season. There may be some uh, some changes to weekend schedules. We may have to move some of those games up. Uh, the lighting has been a big challenge finding contractors to repair the lighting as well as actually finding the materials. To repair the lighting so uh want to be open and honest about that so our our we may not be able to use all the same fields as we have uh, there but there will be a lot of fields available we're we're anticipating that the east bank bridge park will be uh completely reopened then and then fields four five and six should be um three four five and six should be uh reopened at the west bank bridge park by the time uh, baseball starts um let's see moving on to trash bash uh, please save the date. Uh, 2022 Trash Bash is going to be on March 5th. If you are ready to register, um, you can register at www.stcharlesparish.gov slash trash bash. We are welcoming all residents to join us uh, to clean up St. Charles Parish. Um, you know, we had the parish looking pretty good um, within the first two years, and then Hurricane Ida hit, and that's kind of Put a little bit of debris and, uh, and and litter back throughout the parish. So we are looking at uh, getting all of our residents together. We hope we have a, a big showing for that. And then, of course, afterwards, we always do somewhat of a party at the Dufresne Community Center where we're going to have uh, some, some food, some music, some prizes, and that will be at 11.30 a.m. Uh, on March 5th. The Martin Luther King Book Drive is still ongoing. So far, the R- our RSVP volunteers – have collected 250 books. They would like to reach 500 by the end of the month. So if you're listening at home, uh, please consider donating books, your books, whatever they are, um, at the Edward A. Dufresne Community Center during business hours for the Martin Luther King Book Drive. All right. We do have job openings. Um, Animal Control Officer, Carpenter, Operators 1, 2s, 3s, and 4s, Grass Cutter 2, Groundskeeper, Laborers, Public Information Specialist, Shop Mechanic Helper. And that concludes my report, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Appreciate it. Ms. Belloc. Uh, Mr. Jewell, the parks that were not mentioned, um, I guess we're to assume that they're not open or they're not going to open anytime soon or... No, look, we're working every day to to get our parks open. So as soon as they do, as soon as they are open we will uh, announce, <coughs> announce that they are open. Uh, if you have a particular park in mind, um, you know, please get with me. I can see what we can do to get it open faster or at least give you a, 
uh, a report back on what is still outstanding at Major Park IMTT. IMTT. Mm -hmm. I will get you a, a report on what's still left to be done uh, at IMTT. Um, again, a lot of our parks, um, we do have lighting issues. Either the poles were knocked down, right. the electrical was messed up. Um, what we're trying to do is make sure that if it's like a wooden pole, which are really hard to come by, I'm pretty sure Intergy bought every single one in the country. Um, we are okay. we are sounding those poles to make sure that they aren't cracked, that they're not hollow, that they're not going to fall at any other point in right. time, and then uh, making sure the electrical feed is good, and then re actually repositioning the lights back down to the field because when the wind came through, they kind of blew those right. fixtures in all different directions. Rather than running it to getting it repaired right away, um, Dwayne uh, Foray is scheduled to do work at IMTT, so before might want to get all that coordinated before because I know he has a lot of work changing things around over at IMTT. Yeah, and I know we had a, little, a, a small engineering contract to, to arrange all that, so yeah. I, will, um, I will double check on where that is in the process. But, um, you, know, we, you know, our parks are one of our, you know, our, our, our biggest prides and joys, so we want to make sure that we get them back all open, and we want to make sure they're safe. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ordinances, resolutions introduced for publication, public hearing, Monday, February 7th, 2020, 6 p.m. Council Chambers, Courthouse, Hanville. 2022 0016, 2022-0017, 2022-0018, 2022-0019, 2022-0019, 2022-0021. 15 copies have been made and placed in a manila folder at your seat for the following, 2022-0020. Okay, ordinance is scheduled for public hearing introduced at a previous meeting, 2021-0334, an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of a professional services agreement with Kyle Associates, LLC, to perform engineering services for Norco Force Main Transfer Station, project number S211101, not to exceed $425,200. Mr. Daenerys. Yes, sir. This is a transfer station. Uh, we've had problems with overflows around the New Sharpie area and all that. We have two force mains that come from that area, one there and then one that comes from Norco. So we're going to put this intermediate station in, transfer water from one force main to the bigger force main to prevent the overflows in that area. So this is, we're looking to put this station around the Sheck Snyder pump station, and this will allow for future development in that area and all that. We do still have capacity at the uh, Destrahan plant, but we do have areas where the uh, force mains are undersized, so we're, we're shipped in some water around so we won't impact that area as much. So this is to start the design and move forward with that all the way into construction and resident inspection as well. Okay. Thank you. File number 2020-0334 is now open for public hearing. If there's anyone who would like to come up and speak regarding this item, please do so now. Please state your name, address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Any council discussion? Mr. Jones, I have a question. Yes, sir. Will this project help with the... I and E, or is it just to move volume? It, the I and I problem, it's not going to help, but it'll prevent overflows when we have large flows. So we're, that's the number one goal is prevent overflows. Okay. So this will help that. Uh, DQ looks, frowns upon overflows. I and I is always going to be a problem. We're going to try and reduce it as much as we can, but we're really trying to prevent water from coming out of the, the pipe. We want to keep it in, and this will help us do that. Okay. Okay, please cast your votes for file number 2021-0334. And that motion passes with six yeas. 2021-0335, an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of a professional service agreement with Meyer Engineers, LTD, for the Destrahan Wastewater Treatment Plant Aeration Basin Rehab Rehabilitation, project number S211202, 
not to exceed $30,000. Mr. Gennaris. Uh, as y'all are aware, uh, this, the Destran plant took extensive damage during Ida. Uh, we have them to come in to look at a preliminary study to see if there's alternative methods to repair, make the repair. So the temporary repairs were made. We're looking for a more permanent solution. FEMA will allow that, but we have to do a cost benefit to see. So we're going to look at a couple other options that we might be able to do and compare that to going back to repair the existing and see if, if the benefit's there. We have a big problem with the existing anyway before that because of the maintenance associated with it. So we're looking for alternative solutions. So this is that first step to look at that. If it gets approved for FEMA, then we'll go forth with the final design and move forward at that point. Okay. Thank you. File number 2021-0335 is now open for public hearing. If there's anyone who'd like to come up and speak regarding this item, please do so now. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. Okay. Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Any council discussion? Seeing none, please cast your votes for file number 2021-0335. And that motion passes with six yeas. Twenty twenty one zero six three six, an ordinance to authorize parish president to make full and final settlement in the matters entitled Industrial and Mechanical Contractors Incorporated versus St. Charles Parish, twenty ninth Judicial District Court of St. Charles Parish, docket number eighty four zero five six, consolidated with St. Charles Parish versus Industrial Mechanical Contractors, et cetera, 29, Judicial District Court of St. Charles Parish, docket number 84689. Mr. Oob. Yes, uh, thank you, Councilman Fisher. This is the matter that we discussed uh, a few months ago in executive session. Uh, prior to our mediation, this confirms and gives President Jew the authority to uh, finalize a settlement, which as part of the settlement you see in the ordinance, um, it results in a net of 131000 in favor of St. Charles Parish, which offsets some of the cost that St. Charles Parish used to internally complete the project and fix the project on its own. Uh, as you recall, we discussed in executive session all the details for this, but this allows that settlement to be finalized. Okay, thank you. File number 2021-0336 is now open for public hearing. If there's anyone who would like to come up and speak regarding this item, please do so now. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. Okay. Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Any council discussion? Seeing none, please cast your votes for file number 2021-0336. That motion passes with six yeas. 2022-0009, an ordinance approving and authorizing execution of a change order number one final for the parish project number P190902, Spillway Road Rehabilitation, to increase the contract amount by $63,991.18 and increase the contract time by 60 days. Mr. Bingham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a project that uh, we started after we were able to get out to the Spillway Road. Uh, the project was awarded to Omega Foundation Services on February 22nd, 2021, and uh, construction cost was $1,157,156. The project involved rehabilitation of the box culvert crossings of the road and replacement of portions of the roadway surface and base material damaged during repeated openings of the spillway. The design prepared by Principal Engineers, Inc. included armoring the crossings to reduce damage during openings of the spillway in the future, restoring the soil cement stabilized base where damaged, replacing the asphalt surface where stripped away by the flowing water, and repairing the roadway side slopes to eliminate holes created by eddy currents. Change order number one, final, adjust the original contract quantities to match the actual quantities used on the project, which results in an increase in the contract amount of the $63,991.18. So the final construction cost is 
$147.18. The plans addressed the damage that could not uh, be seen, but as the work progressed, additional damage was discovered required, requiring additional work to be done, and that should be addressed work that could be seen rather than could not be seen. Uh, change order number one also increased the contract time by 60 days to cover delays due to saturated ground conditions. We had a lot of times where there was rain and we could not get out there to work, uh, which did not work, did not allow the work to be performed. That was 40 days, and then we also increased it in physical work to be completed as part of the contract, which was that extra work that we talked about. Uh, we would appreciate your support of this uh, final change order. Thank you, Mr. Bingham. File number 2022-009 is now open for public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to come up and speak regarding this item? Please do so now. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. Okay, seeing none, public hearing is closed. Any council discussion? Okay, seeing none, please cast your votes for file number Motion passes with six days with Councilman Gibbs abstaining. <laughs> you have to give a reason. Um, I wasn't here for the uh, um, beginning, the dissertation, or anything. Thank you. So let the record reflect. Okay, 2022-001. An ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of a contract with APC Construction LLC for Parish Project Number P10601, Desalman's Emergency Bulkhead, with a bid in the amount of one million nine hundred eight thousand and nineteen dollars and twenty cents. Mr. Bingham. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Hurricane Ida inflicted severe damage on the section of Tizalman's bulkhead along down the Bayou Road between US 90 and the existing LBLD hurricane protection levy. This section of the wooden bulkhead, which requires routine repairs to prevent soil erosion from behind the bulkhead, has been a concern for the administration since taking office. As such, an engineering agreement with All South Engineering was already in place for the replacement of this bulkhead, which allowed us to move very quickly on these emergency repairs. Uh, before Hurricane Ida's landfall, HESCO baskets and sandbags were placed to protect the area. These preventive measures were instrumental in protecting this area as much of the wooden bulkhead was badly damaged during the storm. Following the storm, public works crews worked with the National Guard troops to reinforce this area to protect from the continuing high tide. When the tides receded, the extent of the damage to the wooden bulkhead was, became very apparent. On October 6, 2021, the parish met on site with State Senator Gary Smith, State Representative Gary Miller, Greg Miller, and representatives of GOSEP, FEMA, NRCS, and CPRA to view the damage and discuss possible federal funding for the emergency repairs and permanent installation of a new bulkhead. Based on those discussions, St. Charles Parish has been able to secure federal funds from FEMA for the emergency repairs. In two short months, All South Engineering has been able to complete a set of plans and specifications for the emergency repairs. ELOS has been able to secure the, all the permits necessary to complete the repairs, and the parish administration has secured the funding. Invitations were sent to 13 uh, contractors on December 7th, and seven responsive bids were received on December 28th, 2022. APC Construction LLC was the low bidder. All South has reviewed the bids and recommends awarding the contract to the low bidder. I also want to mention that we had a public information meeting uh, on January 19th, 2022, in Desalmonds to explain the need for the emergency repairs and present the emergency repair concept, and the people were very uh, receptive to what we were uh, recommending. So uh, 
The design and the permit repairs will be under are, are underway and will be completed in six to nine months. And funding through NRCS is being <coughs> pursued. And we would appreciate your support of this. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Contract. Bain. File number 2022-0010 is now open for public hearing. <coughs> Excuse me. Is there anyone who would like to come up and speak regarding this item? Please do so now. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. <coughs> Excuse me. Seeing none, public hearing is closed. <coughs> Any council discussion? Ms. Montica. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I just wanted to um, thank the administration for um, hosting the town hall that was held last Wednesday. Uh, Councilman um, Dufran, Councilwoman Billings, and I attended. Um, it was well attended, and I, I agree with um, Mr. Bingham that the residents were very receptive um, to the information that was provided, and it also helped them understand that it's not the entire length of the bulkhead. It is just about 800 feet, and that the reason it's being done so expeditiously is because FEMA is funding 90% of it and the other areas will come in the future in phases as the funding becomes available. So thank you very much. Um, look forward to having future town halls uh, as we uh, are able to do the next phases. Any more? <clears throat> okay, please cast your votes for file number 2022-0010. And that motion passes with seven yeas. Persons to address the council, 2020-002, Mr. Bernard Coley, sidewalk from Booty to Luling. <coughs> Mr. Coley, you'll have five minutes to speak. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bernard Colley, and um, I've lived in the parish all my life, per se. I moved away twice, and I moved back here. And during the time in the 70s, I had a piece of property at 2108 Paul Mallet. And uh, I paid either a millage or a tax on that property, and it was designed to put a sidewalk from Booty to Luland, and it never transpired. So um, right now, with the way things are, uh, I've heard a lot of stuff about them closing in the sidewalk, closing in the ditch on the side where I live at, which is at 2114 Palm Allen. And if that would be done, I think that um, it would cause a problem because that would allow vehicles off of Paul Mallet to be able to run into my house. So uh, with what was done before, the sidewalk came from Booty's tracks down to a piece of property that at one time belonged to Pete Ford. I think Russell digs on it now. And then it takes up on the other side from about where St. Charles uh, um, social concerns, and it runs all the way out to Luland. So, with the what the space that's in between is a pasture land, and it would be ideal since uh, that's open space to put the sidewalk on the Montana side from and take it from where it had been started in Booty and tie it in to what is already has exists in, in Luland. And I think that would be a lot cheaper than all the work that would have to be done in order to put it on the other side of the street. So that was my concern, and I think it's never uh, a bad time to do good. And the good would be that since the uh, Ida took away all of that fencing that had been placed up there before, protecting uh, an estate over from uh, Mr. Verreda's property that 
now that that fence is down, it would be easy to go down and put the sidewalk the way it was intended to be in the beginning. So that was my concern, and I thought I would just bring it before the council tonight to see what they decide to do. But I still say that it would be, clo it would be a travesty to close in the other side of the street where that ditch is, and uh, it would cause more money, I think, in order to do that than just putting it where it originally was supposed to be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collin. Appreciate it. <coughs> Ms. Bellock. Um, Mr. Collie. Yes, ma'am. Were you saying that you do not, or you're not interested in having a sidewalk put on Paul Mallard? Am, am I following correct? I'm very what are you interested saying? interested in having a sidewalk, but where it was originally intended to be, mm -hmm. The, the stretch from the track in Booty to that house that belongs to Russell Diggs now is where the sidewalk comes to. And then it takes up on the other side of that pasture over about uh, St. Charles Social Concern all the way out to Luland. It's already been, it's already, everything's in place there for it. So it would be easy now that I took out all of that fencing area that they had where they had put that fence up to put it in there, and it would cost a lot less than moving to the other side of the street. Okay. That's what I'm saying. All right. Mr. Albert, is there even what he's talking about, the, the sidewalk? Is, do you know of anything that's happening with the sidewalk over on Paul Mallard? I haven't heard about anything recently. I mean, the Paul Mallard revitalization plan has some um, street cross-sections, um, has some pedestrian interface. All of that's really waiting on some funding for the state and I think for the environmentals to come back on that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Do you um, know of anything, Mr. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Uh, it is a, it is a uh, project that we're doing with, in conjunction with the DOTD. Mm -hmm. uh, they have that part. That is a state road. Right. So we are working with them, and, and their requirements require sidewalk on both sides of the street and he's asking for it to only be on, on one, one side correct. of the street mm -hmm. and so that that's really where that comes from yeah the the complete streets plan though would have safety mechanisms um for the for the traffic going by i mean there's increased width and everything else um to protect the the buildings along the side i don't know how that could be seeing as how the way power is now uh it takes up uh, it's good a good number of space. In fact, on the side where I live at, uh, if you try walking along that the little sidewalk area there, you subject to be hit. In fact, I know over the time that I've lived here that at least four or five people have been killed along that highway getting off of Port Mallet to um, come to their house. Yes, absolutely, and and that was part of. Um the, the research that went into the, the original revitalization plan. We can get you a copy of that so you can see what they were looking at. Right now, nothing's being done with the, the street or the, I'm just or the saying sidewalks for the time from being. When I paid taxes to have a sidewalk put in, it was to be in conjunction with what was already started from the track in Booty. Uh, there used to be the post office up there, uh, right in that area, not too far from the track. And the, the sidewalk went from the track down to uh, the house that used to belong to Pete Ford. And then it, it, it took up afterwards where uh, St. Charles Social Concerns is and went all the way out mm -hmm. to Luland already. That's already been developed there to that point. So I was just saying it would be easier to finish that off than trying to invest a whole bunch of money into relocate people and or to move, you know, the close in that ditch on the other side. I, I think if the state does start doing the work, there'll be a comment period for you to come back right. and, and, and say that again and All right, put it I'll down for them. If you. you would like a, re, a revitalization map, well, we could get you one sent to you. Yeah, well, I mean, looking at the whole thing, there's been a whole lot of changes that's, that has taken place since I was a little boy to now. Because mm -hmm. at one time, uh, Booty started back 
on the other side of Pier 90, all the way on Highway 90, all the way to past to uh, Mozilla or uh, Paradise. And so now it just comes to right by uh, Walmart on up. But all before, all of that was booty. And now Lula never came over off of Old River Road, but it already extended past where it includes um, Mimosa and all of that area is considered Lula now. But Mr. Colley, I got to stop you for, one, for a minute, so your time yeah. was up. Yeah. President Jewell? I just want to, <clears throat> just kind of further along what, what Miles was saying, and, and Mr. Colley, I appreciate uh, walking with you at the Martin Luther King March and kind of talking with you about some of your experience. We kind of shared some experience and where, we, where, we've, where we've been in, in life. And, um, you know, this project is through the RPC, so the Regional Planning Commission, um, which means there's federal funding for it. And, of course, since it's a state road, we are working with the state. The first phase of this section, which has no sidewalks whatsoever, is from Blueberry, right at the, I mean, from Angus, uh, right at the hospital, down to Blueberry. Now, it is part of the Complete Streets program, so it does require, um, it requires subsurface drainage and uh, sidewalks on both sides of the street. There's no way you can put sidewalks without doing subsurface drainage. There just isn't any, any shoulder there to do it. Uh, I think the main thing right now in, in part of the Complete Streets program, which is which I think is very good, is that um, a lot of research has been done into it and that they are much safer than normal um, just streets with ditches and no sidewalks. Right now, we see children riding bikes on, on the yellow line uh, on, on the shoulder of, 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 that, um, uh, of, uh, of Paul Mallard. We see people walking. Um, I think Councilwoman Fisher Perry has actually witnessed someone being hit by a car um, on Paul Mallard. And, and so I think it will be a good thing um, for, for the street. I'll tell you right now, in complete transparency, what we've been working on, and we've been working to get that project really back on track, which I think we have when I came in. It was started in 2017. Uh, the last obstacle that we're looking at right now, because uh, I believe we have the cross sections of the street, we have everything else, is the relocation of the utilities. If you drive down Paul Mallard Road, you look in the ditch, you see a manhole right in the middle of that ditch. You cannot put a you cannot put a culvert down lay a culvert down that ditch without relocating uh, the sewer mainly and then some of the water. So um, I think last we had was conversations on who was going to pick up the tab on to pay for that. And I think the DOTD has come in and said that they would pay for it. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, I'm waiting for the CEA to then come back. It's going to be an 80-20 split with the federal government DOTD on all the utility relocations. It's going to amount to, we're looking at probably in the $3 million range for just this first section on utility relocation. Not our share. Not our share. That's Correct. the total the total cost there. So, you know, so there's, there's a lot that's going into it. We're trying to keep this project on track. We want this project to go through. Uh, we want to be a part of the, the, the revitalization of Paul Mallard. We think that um, the, the sidewalks and uh, the subsurface range will go a long way. Uh, not only for the safety, but in, in fact the drainage as well, uh, keeping uh, trash and debris out of the drainage system. So that's where we are with it. Thank you. You got clear. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. I got a question. You can't ask. Can't. Sorry, Mr. Collier. Re yeah. 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 Resolutions 2020 0 014, a resolution of St. Charles Parish Council authorizing the parish president to execute any and all documents necessary to authorize. Lafouche Basin Levy District, its contractors, assignees, designees, and agents to access and enter property owned by St. Charles Parish within the Sunset Drainage District for the purpose of evaluating, designing. Is that supposed to be marking? <laughs> Making, improving, constructing, and enhancing the levees or portions therefore located therein or for such terms and conditions as he deems appropriate for the upper baritary risk reduction segment to Sunset Levy Lift, CPRA project number BA2020. Mr. Jewell. Um, before I turn it over to legal, I'll just say um, I think the gist of this is that the parish council was sitting last time as the uh, Sunset Levy District of Governing Authority, and now we're bringing it back to you as the Governing Authority for St. Charles Parish. And um, Corey. Yes, uh, Mr. Raymond, with our office, hand, has primarily handled this matter, so I'll let him speak to both this resolution and the resolution for the Sunset Levy District. Good afternoon. The, um, the, the, Mr. Jewell was correct. 
basically we have we're in a cooperative endeavor agreement with the LBLD to do uh, levy construction and the LBLD needs access to property or permission if you will to property that we St. Charles Parish owns uh, this resolution if passed will allow President Jewell to execute the appropriate authorizations for the LBLD to enter the property same thing holds for the Sunset Drainage District. In a few moments, you all will be asked to sit as the governing authority of the Sunset Drainage District. So the, the same resolution uh, that we're doing for the parish will be done for the Sunset Drainage District. Thank you, Mr. Have Mayor. Have any questions, feel free to shout. Uh, file number 20, <clears throat> is now open for public comment. Does anyone would like to come up and speak? Regarding this item, please do so now. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. Seeing none, public comment is closed. Any council discussion? Ms. Fonseca. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to, um, I guess I have the motion to be added uh, as a sponsor to this and also if, if anyone else is interested. Um, you know, when we... Um, took over as the governing authority for um, Sunset Levy <coughs> District. It was a very um, intensive effort to be able to do that and bring it in because it's so important that our levy pieces parts be viewed as a unified system um, and not as individual systems in each district, um, which some people do tend to look at it that way, but we do want to um, stay away from that. It's extremely important that people understand that without each section being a unified section, that the Upper Baratary Basin um, would not be where it is today. So um, that's my motion. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Does anyone else like to be at? Ms. Cooley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, possibly we could just add the council as a whole, unless anyone has a problem uh, with as an exception. Should be able to do it. Council holding with uh, because Nikki's already on here. It'd be just Julia. Okay. I don't see a problem. Does anyone have see a problem with that? Doing the whole council? Everybody's good. Okay, so I have a motion by Ms. Fonseca, second by Ms. Cluley, to include to amend the ordinance to include sponsorship by the entire parish council. I'm gonna cast our votes on the amended, right? Oh, okay. All right, so file 2022, the amended version is now open for public comment. Is anyone here to speak would like to come up regarding this item? Please do so now. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Okay, seeing none, public comment on the amendment is closed. Any council discussion? Okay, please cast our votes on the amended version. Okay, that motion passes with seven yeas. Now we'll pass. We'll uh, cast our votes for file number twenty twenty two zero zero fourteen as amended. Is that right? And that motion passes as seven yeas. Meetings, announcements, notices, etc. Meetings, the Housing Authority, Tuesday, 125-22, 6 p.m. Council Chambers, Hospital Service District 1, Wednesday, January 26, 2022, 2 p.m. Council Chambers, Lafouche Basin Levy District, Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, 6 p.m. 
Lafouche Basin Levy District Office, 21380 Highway 20 in Vachery. Planning and Zoning Commission, Tuesday, February, I'm sorry, Thursday, February 3rd, 2022, 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers. And the St. Charles Parish Council, Monday, February 7th, 2022, 6 p.m. Council Chambers. Special matters to be considered by the Council. The St. Charles Parish Council is now sitting as the governing authority of the Sunset Drainage District. 2022-0015, a resolution of the St. Charles Parish Council acting as the governing authority of the Sunset Drainage District, authorizing the Parish President to execute any and all documents necessary to authorize the Fouche Basin Levy District, its contractors, assignees, designees, and agents to access and enter property owned by the Sunset, Sunset Drainage District for the purpose of evaluating, designing, marking, improving, constructing, and enhancing the levees and or portions therefore located therein or and for such terms and conditions as he deems appropriate for the Upper Barataria Risk Reduction Segment to Sunset Levy District, CPRA Project Number BA. 0220. Mr. Jewell. Thank you, Chairman. Before I turn it over to uh, Bobby Raymond, I'll just say that um, we do have an upcoming uh, project for the Sunset Levy, which is going to be a levy lift. Um, that's going to be executed uh, by the levy district. Um, we've been working with them uh, over the past year to uh, secure all of the uh, LERDs, which is your access points to the levy. Um, and we are hopeful that this project will commence within the first quarter of 2022 and bring uh, some extra, uh, an extra level of protection for our residents who live within the uh, area of the Sunset Levy District by giving them a seven and a half foot levy, which is cohesive to the rest of our, uh, our, our, East, our, our West Bank levy. Uh, and I should also mention, um, and I, did, I should have shared this in my report, but uh, the parish, I'm sorry, the Corps did receive $8 million to start the engineering and design of the Upper Bear Terrorist Reduction System. It received a positive chief's report. Um, and those are uh, those two bullet points really just can't be understated how, how significant they are uh, because we are now closer than we ever have been to getting a core approved levy uh, on the West Bank of St. Charles Parish, um, which is going to significantly protect us but also uh, decrease our um, our, our, our flood insurance rates. So uh, this is a really big deal. Additionally, the West Shore Hurricane Protection Levy Project on the East Bank, uh, which is going to protect our residents in months and, and, and several thousand residents in St. John and St. James, um, received an extra $400 million worth of, uh, about $453 million worth of uh, funding for construction. So that's a big deal, and that project's underway. Now to Bobby. Sorry about that. Thank you, <laughs> President Jewell. Not unlike the prior resolution you just passed unanimously, uh, this, is, this grants the parish president the authority on behalf of the Sunset Drainage District, pursuant to the resolution authorized by the governing authority, you guys, to enter the property to take appropriate steps to do the construction. We Thank you, Raymond. For your support. You have a motion to amend? To include? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, I just wanted to ask Parish President Jewell in regards to your comment about the positive chief's report. Do we have official word on that? Um, and if we don't, when do you expect to receive it? And will there be like a press release? Because that is a monumental milestone, and I'm not sure, you know, the general public really understands how significant that is. Yeah, I, we are expecting a press release uh, from the Corps of Engineers. Um, our understanding from speaking with our uh, consultants uh, at Adams and Reese is that the report has been signed um, by the the acting secretary or general uh, for the Corps of Engineers in that um, the levy district is supposed to be having a meeting uh, this week I believe with uh, with the Corps so um, Lafourche Basin levy districts up there so as soon as we get a uh, as soon as we get a press release that we can we can utilize we'll put it out because it is a huge deal yes that's wonderful thank you and I would like to motion that the entire council be added to this one for the same reasons previously stated Thank you. I have a motion by Ms. Fonseca and second by Ms. Gordon to add the entire Parish Council to sponsorship. 
Uh, okay, so now file number 2020 amended is now open for public comment. Is there anyone out there who would like to come up and speak regarding this item? Please do so now. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. Seeing none, public comment is closed on the amended. Any council discussion? Okay, please cast your votes on the motion of 20. 2022-15 amended to include sponsorship by the entire St. Charles Parish Council. Okay, that motion passes seven yeas. File number 2020-015 is now open for public comment as amended. Is there anyone who would like to come up and speak? Regarding this item, please do so now. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. Seeing none, public comment is closed. Any council discussion? Seeing none, please cast your votes for file number 2022-0015 as amended. And that motion passes with seven yeas. Adjournment. A motion and a second is needed to adjourn. I have a motion by Ms. Bellock, second by Ms. Fonseca. Please cast your votes to adjourn. Okay, that passes with seven yeas. Have a great evening. We're officially adjourned. Thank y'all.